Hey everybody, Mary here. And today's video is going to be one that I hope nobody finds offensive, but it's important to us. So I thought I'd share it with others that it might be important as well. So uh, if church or religion is something that you are not interested in, please feel free to hit stop right now and you can move on to a different video. Uh, but today's video is all about how do you do church when you're living this mobile RV lifestyle. And this was something that was really important to us because church is a part of our lives and we're used to, uh, when we're stationary, going to the same church every single week where we are actively involved and members. So when we started thinking about this mobile lifestyle with our RV, we really wanted to put some thought and consideration into how will we do church? So I just wanted to tell you how we've been doing it so far. And there are a couple of different approaches um, that we've done and just some ideas to sort of give you things to think about if this is something that you're uh, kind of wanting to work out in your RV living plan. So the first thing is that, you know, a lot of churches these days have gone to providing um, online church. Part of that was because of COVID, sure, but also uh, a lot of churches are just recording their sermons each week and publishing them online. Sometimes on Facebook, sometimes on their web pages, sometimes on YouTube channels, sometimes all of the above. So I wanted to share with you three churches that we do uh, pretty frequently watch online when we are not able to either physically attend a church or maybe it's a travel day for us. So I uh, wanted to share those with you and I have, uh, I'm going to have some screenshots that come up with the name of the church, uh, their YouTube channel if they have one, how you can find them on Facebook if they do Facebook live videos, and then also their church website. So those will come up on a screenshot after I tell you about each one. So the first one that I wanted to mention is Anthem Church, and it's located in Bedford, Massachusetts. So if you are in the New England area and you're looking for a church to stop in and visit, uh, Anthem Church would be a great one to do that. I'm going to show you the screenshot of how you can locate Anthem Church online. So that is Anthem Church in Bedford, Massachusetts. And it is our um, in-person choice when we are visiting New England and our son who lives there. So the next one that I wanted to mention is located on the west side of Indianapolis in a town called Brownsburg, Indiana. And that is Church on the Rock, Brownsburg. Uh, this is a really great church that we have uh, been affiliated with in some form or fashion since its inception many years ago. And I'm going to pause and let you see the slide with their contact information as well. So that is Church on the Rock, Brownsburg in Brownsburg, Indiana. Again, it's on the west side of Indianapolis. Uh, we have attended there for some time and been affiliated with it for even longer. So we can highly recommend that church as being a friendly, open place that you might want to visit if you're ever in the Indianapolis area. So the next one that I'm going to talk about is Faith Baptist Church in Edinburgh, Indiana. So Edinburgh is south of Indianapolis, just off of I-65. Um, and it is a small town, uh, but really convenient to get to. It's right on uh, US 31, right off of 65. So if you find yourself south of Indianapolis, especially if you're near the Camp Atterbury area, which is sort of our home base when we're home in Indiana, this is a great church to visit. Uh, the pastor there is Tim Woodring, and Tim and his wife Tamara are doing some really great work in this small community of Edinburgh. We have known Tim since he was a very young boy. Uh, we visited there. We love Tim and Tamara and their family. I'm going to pause and let you see their contact information as well.
So again, that was Faith Baptist Church in Edinburgh, Indiana. That is south of Indianapolis, about halfway between Indianapolis and Louisville, Kentucky, just right off of I-65. So those are three churches that we have attended personally uh, that also provide online access to their sermons each week. Like I said, some through YouTube, some through Facebook Live. So I encourage you to check out their website check out their Facebook pages and just like those. And if you find yourself uh, in need of a church service and you can't get to one, feel free to jump onto theirs. I know that they will be a blessing to you. So what else do we do when we're not watching online church? Because let's face it, sometimes we really just need that face-to-face -face engagement and encouragement from others. So a couple of things that we do, um, my husband and I, or my husband actually, is prior military. So we do stay at a lot of military campgrounds. And I will tell you that on most military bases, if that's something that you frequent as well, uh, there are usually chapel services that you can attend there. But the other thing that we do is you can just Google search that, see what's in the area, go visit. It is such an amazing way to meet new people and see new ministries that are happening that you might not have access to otherwise. You might be amazed at uh, what can happen and who you can meet and who God might put in your path if you, in fact, just branch out and walk into a church as a complete visitor. And then the last thing that I'm going to suggest is that interestingly, we've discovered that a lot of campgrounds actually have church services as well. And the first time we discovered this, we were staying at a campground just north of Nashville, Tennessee called the Grand Old RV Campground. And uh, there was a sign when we checked in on their main office door that said church services Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So my husband and I got up that morning and decided we would just go to that. Sure enough, a local church has a small core group of people that come to this campground each week, uh, provide um, worship through songs, and then there is a young minister that provides a lesson each week. And so we're seeing that actually several campgrounds do this. So that's another great option as well. So just to recap, the four ways that we um, are most staying connected with church when we travel. The first one is when we can't get to a physical church for whatever reason, we're watching those online options or Facebook Live options like the three that I mentioned today. The second way is that we, when we are staying on a military base, uh, sometimes we will use the base chapel as an option. The third one is just doing a Google search and seeing what churches are in the local area where we are and just going and checking those out. And then the fourth one is that ability to go to those campground church services when offered. And then the last thing that I'm going to mention is that sometimes all four of those are either not available or we're traveling on a Sunday and we uh, just don't have the capability of stopping and doing those. Then the other thing that uh, Phil and I try to do is we just try to keep um, Bible studies available in the RV. And then sometimes we'll just have our own church service with the two of us where we will pull out one of our Bible studies and we'll just do one of those lessons together. There are a lot of great ways that you can stay connected to your faith, still living this remote RV lifestyle and growing in your spiritual journey as well. I hope you thought that the information was helpful and I hope that living your RV lifestyle won't keep you from growing in your faith. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, as always, we're Hendrick, home on the highway and we'll see you down the road.